So welcome to the start of the 2039 season with AB and the Faroe Islands. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Thank you for joining me. I very do, very do much appreciate. That's some high quality English. The support on this series. And thank you for everyone who is tuning in to every single episode. So let's work our way through pre-season, shall we? So we started by the end of last season. We got this social profile update. We have actually dropped by 3.7k. So we're now 529k. I mean... We've just had another run in the Champions League. I thought that might have gone up. Family fans have dropped, but core has gone up and fair weather has gone up. Corporate is absolutely zero. So that's something maybe long term we actually need to fix. I have no idea how, but something we need to fix. Now, since the latest Football Manager update, the youth facilities are now fixed. So the board has announced that we are going to get our youth facilities upgraded, which is fantastic. Costing us four million. But that will take us from um, great to, I think it'll go to state-of-the-art is the final step. So then we will have the state-of-the-art training and state-of-the-art youth facility. So finally, finally, with SI fixing that bug, we can get state-of-the-art youth facilities. So in terms of awards again, um, Meng has been named in the FIFA, FIFA, FIFA Pro under 2011. So well done to him. Um, Meng has also been named in the Danish Team of the Year and he also won Danish Young Player and Danish Players Young Player of the Year. So Michael Meng this year has just had an insane season, still only 20, absolutely delighted. He's just developing better and better. So the season gets underway today. Um, we have spent £6 million, so far bringing in £1.8 million. Now, we are in this video going to actually go forward to 15 games into the season, so we can just have a look at the league a little bit more before the European campaign starts, which we will look at in the end of season review, as well as obviously the end of the season. So, first off, players out. Going out on loan at EB is our young Polish right winger. Um, was a Vesta last year, gone to EB now, so hopefully he can develop. Um, Kikoriski, our defensive mid, after being a KI last year, he's now gone over to Sweden to play. Um, not developed in terms of performance how I would have hoped. We'll see how he does this season. Um, Jostein Rigsetter. Now, this was one of the players I'd hoped for as one of our rotation players, but he trained very poorly. So I criticised his training and he kicked off. And I have a simple rule. If you're going to give attitude, get out. And yeah, he kicked off. So we've ended up shipping him on, on loan back to Norway to Sandy Fjord for the season. Um, when he comes back, we'll have a clean slate. We will have a clean slate when he comes back. For, but for now, yeah, get out of the club. And um, the next player going out on loan is Linskog. Again, needs more first team football. Only 21. Mentally and physically decent. Does have potential as that half back role, but for now he needs the actual game time and he's not getting it with us. So hopefully he can develop. The next one is Aldo Diego, has gone on loan to KI. Now, this is a player I have a lot of hope for. 18 years old, Honduran. The fact a club in our league wants him was fantastic. So he's gone on loan to KI. Hopefully he gets first team football and can continue to develop. The next one going out on loan is one of our young Faroe Islands international players in um, Bjarne Hergard. So again, another player who maybe has potential, maybe he's not hit that level, but you never know, maybe could develop into something. The next loan sign is Erdegaard has now gone on loan to AGF. Again, a player who looks decent, but just has never developed how I would have hoped. And I feel like maybe that two million price tag was a little bit steep but you can't be successful on every transfer and um, the next player who actually is leaving so the first sale is Saad Farid he has after we signed him for 61k we've ended up selling him for 900k plus 50 percent of next sale so he's gone back to Egypt I think it is is there something like in Egypt yeah so he's gone back to Egypt and it, it was a decent deal and then Brandon Mendez, the young right back, the Mexican who we signed a couple of years ago, um, again, never really settled, never really broke into the team, didn't 
pull up trees in the youth team and we have actually agreed to sign a new right back so we've ended up letting Brandon go uh, paid 325k got 750k plus a little bit extra plus percentage of next sales it's not a bad deal so in terms of players coming in we have overpaid for a couple of players from within our league and um, it's really hard to find the balance because if we overpay by too much the board kick off so we brought in Hans Rasmussen from um so you so you so you Roy for 150k he was valued at 1.2 um he's only 16 years old he has a little bit of potential so getting him into our youth team unambitious but so is the rest of Fair Island's youth intake it seems like everybody comes through unambitious um except this guy so Alex Lervig comes in for 400k from KI now they didn't have too much money in the bank and. I wanted to try to give, see if we could boost them so they can spend the money elsewhere. So 400k for this goalkeeper, again, he was valued between 1k and 17k, and we paid 400. Um, plays in goal, I think he has a little bit of potential, he's only 16. So again, that gets you around the ball kicking off too much when you're signing very young players. Um, we needed a backup goalkeeper, someone who... Preferably, I would like someone who didn't take up a foreign player slot. But um, because Ericsson is just complaining again and again, he keeps coming to me saying, I want to leave to get back into the national team. You put him on the transfer list, a month later, he says he's changed his mind. So you take him off the transfer list. Why is my green screen messing up the camera a little bit? Go that way a bit. So you take him off the transfer list, and then a month later, he comes back and says he wants to leave because he wants to get into the national team. So you put him back on the transfer list, then you take him off, then you put him back. So at the minute, uh, Yasin um, Chowki comes in as our new backup goalkeeper. I don't think he's going to be our long-term goalkeeper because he's just, well, he's a foreign player. He's taken up a foreign player slot, but for now, he'll do a job as a backup. And he came in 625k, and we will easily get our money back on him. The next player coming in is a player who I actually wanted to sign last year, but he had no interest in coming to us. Uh, Paul Endre to Bjornsson Stirler comes in from Norway, 17 years old. Um, turns 18 just before the summer and wow so he's cost us 4.9 million but this guy is just insane like absolutely insane so 4.9 million he is definitely our big signing of the winter window i have a lot of hope and then also coming in as a new backup right back gonna be playing the youth team after mendez left for a million we spent 7.5k on this Jordan International, 18 years old, Ali Hadid. And um, he was recommended when our scout was scouting the Asian Cup. And I think that's a great pickup. It's a great pickup for 7.5k. Um, mentally insane. Like he will slot into our B team stroke youth team and just do a job. Will he develop into a world class player? I don't think so. Will he be a player we move on for profit? 100%. Will he be a player who maybe moves to another team in our league? I hope so. I do hope so. So that's our signings going into the season. And our team is looking like this. With the um, Nuremberg um, Monks guard in goal. Still a lot of potential. Only 17. He has decided he wants to play for Denmark. He won't play for the Fair Islands. Which is a bit upsetting. Especially when it came to our academy. Uh, Linnerud's still a right back. He has been wanted by some clubs for pretty much since he came to us, to be honest with you. And um, one by St. Pauli. Now, we did pay three million for him, so trying to recoup the money, it's a bit of a struggle. Um, Meng and Mersek in goal in um, central defence. Mersek is now 28 years old, been with us since 2035. And then Svanemsley, who he's developing so nicely. 19 years old, we paid 2.3 million, remember, for him. So both our Norwegian fullbacks did cost us quite a lot of money, but they're long term. They are both long term players. Uh, Christensen has been standing to play in this deep line playmaker role instead of a half back. Um, when we are winning a game, especially in the league, I will change it to a half back and put a new player on. I think in Europe we will use a half back as well. Uh, Tom Bjorn Staller in this central mid. And then we've got um, Michan playing attacker mid, who we have spoke about. I really don't want him to play there due to his performances. Um, Ekstrom on the left wing at the minute, our young Norwegian left winger. 
And then on the right you have Engelin who is cutting inside. And he's only, he's 22 now. It feels like he's been around a while. 2036 we signed him. Then up top to start the season is going to be Holman who... Let's just remember we signed this Holman for free in 2036. He's now 19 years old and... He could develop. He could develop. Now, in terms of some players to look out for throughout this season, in terms of performance, I'm hoping uh, Diara can step up. 18 years old, obviously joined us halfway through last season. Um, could develop into a really good player. Um, Conrad um, washed her roast. Well, yeah. I mean, I, f I feel like I nailed it. But when did they join us? D did they join us right at the end of last season? The first... Yeah, why are all of these people on the list for for this season? That's that's annoying. Okay, let's just quickly point through them. Aldo Diaz, who we paid 140k for the Honju, and I think we looked him last episode, but I might have made a big mistake here. Um, Diara, who we bought him for 125k from uh, Burkino Faso, looks a very talented player. Um, you've got Ekstrom, we signed from Viking for 2.5 million. 19 years old, comes in as a hot prospect, but hopefully will get a lot of football this year. Then, obviously, you have the superstar striker who we've agreed to sign here, uh, Conrad, from Poland, 1.8 million. Last year, he was in the top 50 wonder kids in the world, so I'm hoping he could be a key to us having a good season this year. Him and Holman as striker options could be, could be deadly. A um, couple of injuries to point out, Midskugan isn't starting today because he is, he is still carrying a knock. But, I mean, he's just been a ever-present. 2034 he joined us. Um, unfortunately, he has now been capped by Norway, which means he won't get a cap for the Fair Islands, which is a bit upsetting, shall we say, a bit upsetting. Um, but we've just got depth. We've just got depth in every position. Um, Sundstrom was getting linked with a few clubs over the winter. Joined us 2035 as well. But I just want to hold on to him. He's just an ever-present, solid player when he plays for us. So we're just going to try to hold on to him. But um, that's the team going into the season. Um, if we're going to the league side of things and going to the transfers, you can see the highest transfers are going to have been us, a, 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 sorry, purchase, a sale, a sale, purchase, purchase. Then you have... 155k EB have picked up a player from Iceland who 30 years old I mean I'd have sold them one of my players for less than that um, from Marmino B36 have spent 43k on this guy I mean he's got good pace and acceleration Spanish Um, they have signed this guy I mean it's just getting upsetting isn't it they are signing some trash they are signing some trash. Okay, let, let's pick out. Where's the first KI signing? The loan signing. They not spent any money at all. No, KI have not signed anyone for cash. Was there anyone near the end of last season? No, because look, it's all us. All us, all the way down. Until here. This Vesta Riviera deal, which we looked at in the last episode, actually. Ah, that's a bit. Come on. Teams need to step up. They need to step up. Ugh. Let's jump forward. So jumping forward just a little bit. The 50 best wonder kids in world football. Um, you can see here the Ivorian um, L Luzimu, the next Walter Mios and Mem Memdi Mohammed among the top 50. Okay. Let's check this guy out, shall we? 31 years. Okay. The next one of them. Okay. Got to be confused for a second there. But this is what I want to point out. 13th place. 11, 12, 13th place. We have an AB player in the top 15 best wonder kids in world football. I mean, I'm claiming it's because of what he's done with us because he's now played four games for us. So that basically means we have got him into the top 15 of wonder kids in world football. But that's insane. 4.9 million well spent, in my opinion. 4.9 million well spent. In terms of the two Champions League games, we played Man United and lost 3-0. Um, almost expected, to be honest. I didn't think we'd turn them over at Old Trafford. We then played Rennes at home and got a one-all draw. 
Um, if we go into the group phase, we finished, if I move this way, in 28th place. And we won one, drew four, lost three. So we did fairly well, you know. We finished on seven points. Now, if you go up, ten points would have got us into the knockout rounds. So we, this is the first season where I can specifically and categorically, categorically say I see progression. I see that we actually are fighting and looking good against other teams in the Champions League. It's actually starting to show and it's actually starting to look good. And I think it's because a lot of our players have been with us for two and three years and they are just starting to click together and just look that 5%. Okay, so here we are. We're 15 games into the league season and we're going to have a look at it just a little bit more detail than maybe normal when it comes to the league kind of things now. Um, and definitely, as I've said before, I'm using all of this as a great way to practice and get better at creating the best format for these videos going forward. Um, especially when you think about the new football manager and stuff. Um, hopefully we've got a good format which works by that point. So we start the season against TV, go 4-0 win. Um, we had three wins in a row before drawing away from home to MKI. Um, 87th minute equalised for them. We did then win the Super Cup with Conrad picking up two and Mosek on the score sheet as well. 3-0 victory there in the Super Cup. Um, we then played away to Wigan Gertrude and got another draw. So back-to-back -back draws, but both times against pretty much our title rivals, I would say. We then went on a winning run. We've won every single game since then, uh, only conceding two goals as well in that long stretch. Um, and we have just played the top two teams again. Wigan Goethe, we beat 4-0 at home. And Mishan with two, Midskugan with two. We then played KI at home and got a 3-0 victory. Midskugan with two again and Holman on the score sheet. And we have just knocked KI out of the cup in the third round we got drawn against them. But we've knocked them out 2-0. Absolute demolition job. Really, really pleased. So we're looking solid. Um, in terms of goals this season, Holman has 18 goals in 13 starts. And he's just an absolute beast. And um, when you think we paid absolutely nothing for him, signing of the series so far, I'm not sure. Him or maybe... Kilberg, but Kilberg isn't in our starting team anymore, so it's tough to decide, but got to be proud. Uh, 10 goals for um, Conrad as well, who has been playing some football in attacking midfield. Um, Midskugan has picked up 9, 7 for Mishan. He is actually starting to get a few more goals. Um, and Eglin with 6. In terms of assists, top assist is Eglin with 9. Uh, Sterler has 7 from centre mid. Um, Mishan with six and then um, Conrad with five. So we're looking decent. Uh, we do have joint top goal scorer in the league alongside Stefansson for um, KI. This is actually a player I considered signing when he had the potential to become a, um, a Fair Islands player. But once he got capped by Iceland, I dumped it off. But he's still scoring a lot of goals for them. But we have joint top there with 15. Uh, we are nine points clear of KI already. Won 13, drew two. Uh, KI have won nine, drew five, lost one. Wiegenger Goethe have creeped back up, but they've won eight, drew three, lost four. So not the best start for them. Uh, bottom league, NSI only have three points this season so far. B36 and Scala with tens apiece. So them three have already dropped off with a seven-point gap to HB. Um, but we're getting there. Ranked obviously 29th in the league at the minute. The league is in its standing. The B team then won 13, drew 2 as well. Um, slightly more points ahead, 16 points clear. Um, top goal scorer is Aja, who is one of our academy players. So he is starting to score a lot of goals for the B team, which is fair play to him. In terms of average rating, I can see Kilberg has the highest average rating for the B team. So he is getting football for the B team this year. Unfortunately, he actually wants to leave, which is a bit upset. And I would like to just almost just keep him ticking along in our team until he retires. And um, he's been with us since 2029, but he just doesn't get into the first team too much. He has played a couple of games for us. He played um, 
where's he at? In the in the cup, he played one game for us, and must have been one game in the Champions League as well. Then I don't want to lose him, and I don't want to keep upsetting him. But he's not even close to being in our starting squad, and that's the issue with him. Talking about our starting squad, we have added a few transfers. Um, in terms of first off players leaving, um, we loaned out a player to Scala. Uh, Sig Vardson has gone out on loan. Hopefully he can develop. Still only 17. You never know. Um, coming in then, we've signed Mohamed Rabi as another option at right back. Uh, 18 years old Egyptian. Looks very talented. 215k. He can play right back, centre back, defensive mid and on the wing. So, again, I think it's a good sign of our B team. Will he develop? Hopefully. If he doesn't, we'll probably get our money back when you pick them up for that cheap. Um, coming on a free transfer is a Costa Rican central midfielder who, again, have a lot of potential, a lot of hope that he can develop. Um, it cost us nothing. Nothing. And if anything, he's going to end up having a few years on loan in our division and strengthening other teams in the division. So... Happy with that signing. And coming in for half a million is a Czech Republican central midfielder who, again, is playing for our youth team, will maybe move up into our B team. Not the best. He's not the best. Cost us 650k total. This is, again, another player who, long term, I'm hoping, will filter into other teams within our division. We can hope. We can hope. Um, in terms of the other teams in our division, then, how are we looking? Um, KIR 500k in the red. I don't know what more I can do to try to help them. Um, they have good train facilities, average youth. Um, so they're getting a little bit better. Adequate and below average um, for NES. But they do have 2.7 million in the bank. So financially, they looking decent. Scala, 100k in the red. Basic and basic facilities. TB have below average and basic. They have 388k in the bank. Uh, Vikinger Goethe have adequate and adequate. They have 1.23 million in the bank, so they looking strong. Uh, Vesta have 83k, basic and basic. Uh, we are slightly above all of them. Uh, B36 have below average and basic with 600k in the bank. And EB have basic and basic with 700k. HB have adequate and below average with 1.6 million, so they looking decent. Um, financially, teams are not looking the strongest. Um, facility wise teams are just not doing it um we quite a few years into this now there has to be a point where they start stepping up i can't do it all on my own um i think i'm realistically i might actually give it till 2050 for ab to win a european trophy if we don't look like we're on the cusp of it if we're still around the same situation as we are now, going out in group stages in 11 years, at that point, I think I will leave AB and try to push up one or two more teams. So hopefully AB will continue at the quality they have. And if we can take over one team and, like, get their facilities up and get them into European group stages, then drop off to another team and do the same again, it might strengthen the whole league and it's worth trying. So like I say, I am considering doing that just to try to make this build a nation actually build a nation. Because at the minute, it's AB is kicking ass and I'm just giving some dregs to the other teams because they don't know what to do with it. Um, but also the worry there is AB, AB drop off dramatically and the league reputation goes down before we have chance to build up one of them teams. So I'm torn. I'm torn on what's best to do. But that's it for today's episode. Thank you for watching. In the next episode, we'll recap the season. And that's the European run, etc. to look at. So And the national team. So thank you for watching. I've been Paul, also known as the Northman. And I'll see you next time.